Hey, you know, no one cares. Eric Lindros is talking. We're all getting a little tired of road hockey and it's ready for, uh, for the real deal. So listen, we're gonna play November 11th and 12th. We're gonna have some fun when I mean play and our draft night on the 11th and then on the 12th, we're gonna have a bunch of games. So listen, hockey's the best game in the world. We gotta get back on the ice. It'd be great to go out and see some other people and have some fun. So listen, we're gonna support Easter Seals in every way we can, raise a pile of money for them and let's go out and have a great time. Car! Let's go! Ladies and gentlemen, Ooh. a little ridiculous. Good boy. Play all the hits! Left the Toronto Maple Leafs. Let me finish. How much more to go to bed after watching that? I'm quite hyped. <laughs> With you wherever you are, welcome to LFO. Victory puppy Ziggy, can we score a goal? Yeah, nope, nope, distinct kicking motion, nope. Before I get to the whole fist bump thing, this is the last time I'll bug you about it. Easter Seals, it's a charity that helps out kids with physical disabilities. I'm going to be hanging out with Eric Lindros tomorrow and Friday as we play hockey to raise money for Easter Seals. Ken Reed got me linked up with this hockey tournament a few years ago and I said, Ken, I don't know how to play hockey. And he said, so, because it's just about raising money. So I go there every year, stink real bad, but we raise a lot of money. And this thing, this thing, this beautiful trophy that you see in the background, it is not a popcorn maker. That's the other one. It doesn't really work. But this trophy goes to the top fundraising team and the top individual fundraiser every year. Right now I'm the top individual fundraiser. That is not good enough. Rachel's Raiders are in first and I want them to stay in first. We've raised over $30,000 so far for Easter Seals. Once again, a charity that helps with kids with physical disabilities. We're talking about equipment. AFOs, wheelchairs, all sorts of things that kids need. Very specific custom built stuff that kids need. Camp experiences, the sort of camp experiences that me and my family got to experience when we were younger in an accessible environment. If you get me to $50,000 raised for Easter Seals in this year's tournament, link in the description down below, Hat Guy will do his own LFR. And if you're like, Steve, I hate Hat Guy. First of all, I don't blame you. Second of all, whatever, it's $50,000 for a good cause. And you should be in a good mood. The Leafs just Shout out the flyers. I'm gonna put this back now because I know it'll bother people if I don't. All right, where was I? Oh yeah, Leafs win three to nothing over the Philadelphia Flyers. Their first win and first game against the Philadelphia Flyers in over 700 days. Has it really been that long? Yes, it is because apparently I don't know the Philadelphia Flyers. Flyers fans, you're either gonna really love this or really hate it. I hate to bring up the Boston Bruins in general, but they have a brand and they stick to it year in and year out all the time. The orange team that I saw tonight looked like a team doing an impression of the Philadelphia Flyers and not doing it well. Yeah, it was chippy. There were moments where it was chippy and yeah, get away from my goalie and Travis Konechny being a rat with Michael Bunting, who let's be honest is kind of a rat, but he's our rat. But even though they were chippy and even though there were annoying moments, the Philadelphia Flyers did not look hard to play against. In fact, and Leafs fans will know what an insult this is, you know what the Philadelphia Flyers looked like tonight? what the Leafs looked like at the beginning of the season. Because they were getting a bunch of shots on goal, a bunch of shot attempts, and you could basically throw them all out the window for how dangerous they were. Now, it's not to say they didn't have any chances. Their best two chances might have come in the first 30 seconds, which the Leafs really have to fix. Jack Campbell was a little busy in the first period, but for the most part, I just watched the shot counter keep going up and up and up, and the amount of anxiety I felt went down and down and down. Now, I don't know if that's just the Flyers playing poorly five on five or if their power play sucks. I guess we can all have our off nights, but I was, I was very surprised by the Flyers. Now I'm hammering them and I'm not giving the Leafs any credit. The Leafs did play good. And one thing that they have added, at least last year, they had a lot more of against all the Canadian teams, is games where you're like, are the Leafs playing really good or is the other team playing really bad? And generally speaking, the answer is somewhere in the middle. The Leafs played a really solid defensive game, even though they gave up a lot of shots and there were a lot of opportunities. They weren't really in the dangerous areas. I don't know if you're aware of naturalstattrick.com, but this is a heat map of where all the shots came from. And as you can see, the flyers are all over the map and that is not necessarily a good thing. And there's not a ton of work to do for Jack Campbell in front. There were some, but when there were, there was no rebound or it was redirected away. The defender was able to easily clear it away. So maybe that's it. 
maybe that's why the Flyers didn't look dangerous. Maybe the Leafs played their strategy perfectly. Flyers were going for rebounds, the Leafs didn't allow it, but if they were going for rebounds, why were they never in the slot? I don't know, this might be weird for people who always watch LFR. I usually talk about the Leafs from a Leafs fan perspective, but I was so caught off guard by how bleh the Flyers were. That's a word. Bleh. How was it spelled? And there's really no excuse for it because the Flyers were handed a gift before the game even began. John Tavares, not in the lineup for the Leafs. It's a gift because A, he's John Tavares, but he's also the hottest Leaf. He's got goals in six straight games. Heading into the game, I think the Leafs' last 14 goals came from the core four. Six of them were John Tavares's, and no one else has been able to score. You get rid of one of those guys, that should be a win. Instead, it's a shutout loss. Hilariously, the Leafs' first two goals still came from one of the core four forwards. The first goal coming from William Neely. They're reviewing it. Great. As soon as I saw, like, I didn't even need to see the replay. As soon as I saw that it was being reviewed for a kick, my Leaf fan pessimistic instincts kicked in and I thought, all right, this isn't gonna count and we're all gonna be very upset. But no, no. Sometimes you need a voice of reason. And in this case, Sheldon Keefe was the face of reason. I think it was one of the Leafs players asked if he was gonna review it and he simply responded with this face and I... <laughs> I've, is, is Sheldon Keefe part Italian? I've seen this face at many a Christmas dinner. Really? There's some... <laughs> oh, he said this? I don't agree with this. I'm sorry, Drew, just show his face some more. Oh, a guy told me a thing and I was like, that thing? No way. What is this? I never, <laughs> I've never. He, I, Sheldon Keefe, what, what, that has to be the north of Italy, right? Like way, way north and way, way west. I don't know why I find that face so funny. That has to be in the thumbnail. I love it. <laughs> Anyway, where was it? Uh, there's chaos in front of the net. Willie Nylander is driving the net, which is something that he has to do more because he is so good at it and something the Flyers did not do in this game. The puck deflects off Willie's skate. His foot does move. I, I don't blame the ref. I understand why it was called no goal on the ice. This is what video review is for, after all. To make a call based on what you see with your eyes. And if it's wrong, hey, you get it. Sh Sheldon, show him the face. Oh, you get it wrong, then you get it right. What can I say? He's Italian. He's a anyway, Willie's foot moves after the fact, but it was not a distinct kicking motion. Definitely not a distinct kicking motion based on the many examples of non-kicks apparently that we've seen around the NHL so far this season. They've been featured in Dangits, they've been featured in LFRs. You have to football punt a puck into the net in order for it to be called a kick, apparently. And that one is not one. That's a goal. William Nylander, Leafs, one nothing. And there's still some chippiness and guys are going at each other, bunting versus connecting. I, I just wanted to see him go. Didn't you want to see them go? Actually, I'm kind of glad he didn't because people said Toronto was quiet. It was a morgue in Philadelphia tonight. And it feels like if bunting got into a fight with Konechny and Konechny connected with one, then maybe that could have ignited the crowd, flyers get a little energy, it goes to their legs, and who knows what happens in the third. Instead, what happens in real life is the Leafs get a power play. Because less than five minutes in, Ivan Provorov takes a slashing call on Michael Bunting, and today I learned that slashing is when you use your hockey stick to lift someone off their feet by their junk. I was introduced to this term far too late in life, but cowbelling, that, that was a cowbell. And not the kind that you need more of either. Anyway, so it's a power play for the Leafs. And as of late, not a thing I dread anymore. Even that game against the Kings, which was awful, thanks for the tickets, Drew, at least the Leafs scored on the power play. And on this power play, Nick Ritchie moved up to the first unit. Talk about a bump for this guy. Get a load of this. He goes from being relegated all the way to the fourth line to looking good on the fourth line to not even really looking good on the fourth line. And then Tavares is out and all of a sudden he's on the second line with Kerfoot and Marner. And then he's on the first power play unit as well. And other than a kind of silly penalty where he took off someone's helmet and threw it, he had a great game, I thought, generating scoring chances. He had a shot just prior to this goal on the power play. And then some nifty mittens dangling guys on the Philadelphia Flyers penalty kill backhand pass to William Nylander beautiful all Willie's got to do is shoot which he loves to do second in the NHL in shots on goal behind who you ask Alexander Ovechkin which is an answer that you already knew doesn't matter about him he's not in this game William Nylander is his second of the game and the Leafs are up two 
to nothing. Not too long after, Kasha, it was a bit of a scary play, he takes a tripping call on Scott Lawton and then as he comes back around, I don't think this was on purpose, he kind of hits Lawton in the head. He seemed to be okay afterwards, but it was a jarring moment just the same. Konechny bumping into the ref too, it was just a bunch of awkward moments for the Flyers in this game. Speaking of awkward, their power play, the Leafs managed to kill that off. Maybe the Leafs just had a really good penalty kill in this one. Leave a comment in the comment box down below if I'm totally off base about the Flyers power play. But shortly after this kill, guess what? Leafs go back to the power play because people just hate Mitch Marner's teeth. I don't know who sent out the memo that we have to knock out all his teeth before the season's done, but stop it! Claude Giroux does it, but the Flyers kill the penalty, but they do not kill the penalty echo, which is the 10 or 15 seconds after they kill one. In the seconds after the penalty is killed, again, this is a moment where I'm like, did the Leafs do something good or the Flyers did something bad or both? Here's the good. The Leafs dump it in and Alexander Kerfoot gets on his horse. Like he's flying in there. Here's the bad. At the offensive blue line, Justin Braun is basically flat footed and not moving, which is probably not great when Alex Kerfoot is going a thousand miles an hour. He whips around the net and he's looking for an open man. And I got just the thing for you there, Alex. Andrzej Kasha in the slot wide open. Jeez, I know the guy's snake bitten, but show him some respect. That's happened a bunch of times in recent games. It's mostly been John Tavares doing it, but Leafs have just been able to just kind of stand there in the middle slot roughly. Unguarded, completely unguarded. Whatever they're doing on their entries to just sort of disappear to magically convince everyone on the opposing team that they're John Cena. Kasha does it on this play. He makes no mistake against Carter Hart. He gets one finally after that breakaway goal at home and the Leafs up three nothing. It's looking convincing. Now obviously the Flyers get caught puck watching here and this uh, still does not look very good, but it just feels like the Leafs were given way too easy of an entry that allowed for that situation to happen. And then after that, I ask you, similarly to how I asked you during the Leafs, what, first six, seven games? When did the Flyers look dangerous? Like the Flyers don't play till Friday. It is in Carolina. I don't know, maybe they wanted to catch the bus. I don't know, there's, there's something about me. I, I like a close game. Listen, I, I would like the Leafs to win games 10 nothing. That'd be cool. But a close game is better. And a loud game is always better. Because close games are loud and exciting. If the Flyers look like they were ever gonna challenge at the end of this game, that building would have got loud and it could have been exciting. Give me a, give me at least a moment. Let, let my heart rate rise a little. I'm a Leafs fan for crying out loud. I was born to believe that they were gonna blow it and never not once. The Leafs just sort of shut it down and Jack Campbell had to stop a few muffins in the final 10 minutes and he secures the shutout. So I guess my question to you before we get to questions, the Leafs do have the capacity to do this. When one of Matthews usually or to Varus are out of the lineup. They can put on these defensive clinics because they're just locked. Is that what happened here? Did they play like a more conservative style, a more responsible style, or were the Flyers just not there? Questions from you this time. Early LFR question, now that Kasha has a mustache, is it in fact Akasha Stasha? I'll see myself out. You're a dad now. I'm just letting you know that. When this lineup is fully healthy, who would you rather, Engvall or Semyonov? Right, so Kirill Semyonov making his NHL debut in this game. I thought he was good. Uh, he made one really smart, responsible, poised play behind the Leafs' uh, own net that I remember. He, he played with speed, uh, but other than that, he was just sort of on the fourth line, right? It's hard to have a special performance on the fourth line. Did help kill penalties, that was nice. But in terms of who would I rather, him or Engvall? I mean, the answer is Engvall because Engvall has played many games in the National Hockey League now and been trusted in many situations. Girl Semyonov, who has looked really good on the Marlies, nine points in nine games, and I thought looked good in his NHL debut, he just got here. That answer, I bet, could change in just a few weeks' time, but right now, I have to give the edge to Engvall. Can the Leafs afford to pay Jack 11 million? No. Thoughts on Hall tonight? Yeah, so I guess I just wasn't paying much attention because I saw Hall in the warm-up and I saw, oh, well, it's, you know, it's a shame that Lilligren's coming out, but he's still young in this league. He had a bit of a mistake in the Kings game. Ah, he'll get back in. And then I see Lilligren with the puck in the first few minutes and I'm like, wait a sec. So it was Dermot who came out of the lineup, which should tell you everything you need to know about how well Lilligren has played, but that was not the question you asked. The question was about Justin Hall. Justin Hall looked like Justin Hall. He looked like a motivated and determined 
Justin Hall, which is what the Leafs needed because during the first few games and that play where Matthews blew up at him because it was offside, he just seemed to lack focus. The Leafs were kind of cryptic about what they wanted out of Justin Hall and getting him back on track. Well, how is he supposed to do that? sitting up in the stands. Part of me wonders if they just had to get his attention, and I think they got it. So, for now, that is it for this one. Thank you very much for watching. Click like if you like this video. Click subscribe if you really like to tell all your friends. We had a brand new podcast drop today, and we're going to have another one drop tomorrow on SDPN. That's not typical, but obviously I got the Eric Lindros Celebrity Hockey Classic on Friday. And speaking of which, the Eric Lindros Celebrity Hockey Classic in support of Easter Seals. Link in the description down below. I'm trying to raise as much money as possible to help kids be kids, please help me out.